Legends, how you doing? Oh, I'm a bit of pain to be honest. I thought this would be a good time to jump on and show you what it's, my days have been like. So, we're about three days in. We've got a 10, 11, maybe 12 hour day. The track is either dry riverbed or this. 30 ish degrees. I'm really struggling with the heat. The heat's what's knocking me around more than anything, to be honest. Bloody hell, big steps. It's 20 kilo pack. I'm suffering. The guys I'm with are faster, so it adds pressure. But, you know, trick your own track, right? Definitely fatigued. But you know what? What do we keep saying? Get comfortable being uncomfortable. I'm definitely uncomfortable. And I'm just trying to rely you know, on this on this fitness that we do. At the moment in my head I'm pushing the sled. Except I'm pushing the blade sled uphill. Anyway, that's not all rainbows and cupcakes. They can be a brutal thing. But anyway, that's what it's all about, right? Type 2 fun right now. Hopefully, there's enough highlights to make it a type 1 fun. So far, so good though. Brilliant. All right, boys. Live long and prosper. Go forth and conquer. Alright, update. Five hours later. I was dying going up that hill. Anyway, we've had a swim because we were forced to go around a, a river crossing and have a bit of a swim and sun's just going down with this beautiful gorge. Now that's magic. Now we talk about mindset all the time. You flick a switch, all of a sudden I feel a million bucks. Legs are feeling great. Everything's going awesome. And I'm having a beautiful day. It's amazing how it just switches. Living life, guys. Living life. Okay. When it all turns pear-shaped and you end up carrying your boots. Not a good sign. <laughs> so... I've got a few blisters. Oh. So I'm just trying to take it easy. So I'm walking in thongs for a little while. Just going to head down to a water hole, try and soften them up, dress them, see how it goes. Oh. Day four, still got five days to go. So let's hope we can control these before they get out of control. All right, so morning of day five. I've been going maybe an hour and a half on ground, which is pretty much just rock. We came from down in those flatlands down there. So a fair way down. It's been a big solid climb this morning. Man, I talk about... Just getting through the, the everydays of the unpleasantries of adventure sometimes. This is miserable. My feet are just on fire. I have got blisters. From the one on the bottom of my foot on my heel is my entire heel. And then the one on the ball of my foot, both on my left is the size of the entire pad. And so I taped them up yesterday, laid off them for a few hours. I got up early this morning, just to decamp before the other guys, just to give myself a bit more wiggle room and get myself ready and my head in the right place. Because 
We're trying to do 28 k's today. It's hot. Still the morning, so it's not too bad, but it's going to be blistering hot. We're on top of a ridge line. It's graded as a hard to very hard day. And every step is like standing on pins. But I'm just trying to block it out. I'm just trying to take the best stride I can and keep moving forward going up the hills on and down the hills especially just having to watch my foot placement really carefully which changes your stride sometimes you take two steps instead of one you might have to go sideways instead of up that's kind of what I'm having to do it's going to be an interesting day I just wanted to record this now because at the moment I've still got a bit of control now, when I say I've been going for an hour and a half, the reason I picked up my camera is I've only hit the 3K mark. <laughs> oh my God. Which means I'm only less than 10, well, it's just, just over 10% of the way into the day. All right, I'll check in later. We'll see how we go. down the ridge after walking for kilometers along it the down part is not any better um, it's going to be a long slow day <laughs> at this rate it's about 12 hours which means we'll be arriving probably in the dark worst part of something like this is holding your mates up unfortunately we're not exactly in the type of place where you can sort of just let people go off and so you really gotta you know stay within sort of distance the guys are actually went up to a lookout behind me so I'm taking the opportunity to give them a head start so they're not waiting for me Just a matter of perseverance. Unlike say doing Akakoda challenges where you get blisters or something and you go, right, okay, there's a checkpoint up ahead or there's a, a way out. Or you can tap out at any stage. We don't have that here. If I make the the next shoot, far, what, twenty clicks, oh, there's nobody to tap out to. There's nobody coming to get you. And you're good to get yourself out. So you just gotta close your eyes, suck it up. So all these past projects and adventures and things we do. That's what it's all about building that res resilience the way I'm thinking about it now is I'm sort of transformed a little bit back to my heavy days where I was always last and when I was behind the boys there that was the feeling I had I thought, oh god here we go again so I know this feeling then I thought no no I've got to turn that around um, hey I'm only 100 meters behind and yet I've got two broken feet you know and um, we're walking across pretty harsh hot terrain and I'm still managing to stay mobile and maybe not keeping up with them but having a chance to stay near them as you can see this ground is just you know it's kind of a path but it's just so loose and, it's just so loose and gravelly you just you've got to watch where you're going I don't want to compound the issue by having a fall and all of a sudden you know, we've got bigger problems. Talk about dominoes falling. Well, blisters are a domino. Me uh, falling over would be a pretty big domino to fall. 
All right, catch up soon. Side note. But I keep asking to get myself into positions where I push the limits a little bit. And I don't mean limits as in, well, in this particular case, I know I can track this amount of distance. But not feeling like this. It's what we call type three fun. There's no fun in this. It's just painful. But can I just keep going through the pain? You know, I still have a smile on my face at the end of the day. I suppose we'll find out in about six or seven hours, but if I can keep this pace up, that's what basically what it will be. It's been pretty cool. I've sort of been by myself the last couple of hours, intentionally. Um, and uh, Sometimes it feels a little bit better when you're by yourself because if you hurt, you know, hurt your foot, you yell out loud. If you have to stop for a second, you're not worried about who's in front or who's behind. Anyway, let's see how... How my mind handles a bit of adversity. Uh, 15 k's in, must be 30 odd degrees out here. Now, 15 k's isn't a lot when you talk about running around in the Rang State Forest. But out here, it's just different. Sometimes you're walking down riverbeds, you're walking on the sides of big hills and down caverns like that type of thing while I get to talk to you it's on these little trails that come up which is safe enough to sort of walk and talk not often we get a chance to see how far we can push ourselves like I said before it's not like I'm doing anything extraordinary here. It's just the fact that I've put myself in a position where I can either walk back to a campsite, and hopefully somebody can come and get me in a day or two, or walk forward to a campsite and somebody can find me in a day or two. Either way, I don't really have much choice. I'm just gonna keep walking. So it's, we sometimes try to manufacture things in our everyday lives that so-called push us and force us into situations. It's hard to do that because we usually stop ourselves before it gets too nasty. At the moment, I'm just trying to block out the pain. I just split my my heel open and I could feel the those lovely juices coming out. So I stopped and re-taped. You know, the whole time thinking, oh, damn, I've still got 13 k's to walk or whatever it is, you know. Anyway, I'm trying to take this challenge as a bit of a positive. I want to see if I can keep pushing and get to, I know I'll get to the end, but I just want to see what condition I'll be. Anyway. Okay. That's the end of hot weather expeditions for a while. But then uh, I'm dying. I don't know what the temperature is. But we just can't seem to escape it. It's just it's just so hot. Good news is, I can't feel my feet anymore, which is kind of good. But the heat's absolutely draining. Whew. 
So I've got about four k's to go, which in my head I now know we'll get it done today. Might be a slow, slow four k's, but I'll get it done. What it did do is highlight something for me. Let me talk about it when I was doing Kokoda training, for instance, is the real challenge of Kokoda. This is the Gold Coast 96, of course, is the last 18 Ks. The problem is, is you can't train for that last 18 Ks unless you've already done the first 80. Because you don't know how fatigued you're going to be and how sore and you know where the problems are whether it's your feet or back or hips or whatever it may be it's very hard to train for long events like that unless you um put in long training hours long days to get to that point where you don't want to train anymore and then push past it it's kind of what i'm doing today the k's aren't the same conditions are just brutal it's about as hard a trick as I've, a day's trick that I've done in many many years because of the heat because of conditions of my feet and all the things conditions of the track it's unbelievable it's so rocky my boots are just torn to pieces um, lots of elevation lots of down but this next 4k's is what all the training is for, not the first or the last. You know, we've probably done 100 k so far, you know, overall, over the last four days or so. You know. Anyway, I'll see how I feel when I get into camp. All right, I made it into camp. I couldn't film when I came into camp. Because to be honest, I was just too exhausted. I don't think I could have walked another two feet. I was absolutely shattered. It's cooled down now, so I'm a little bit better. We've got a pretty awesome camp spot just in a ravine here. Oh wow, today was was a lot. Scary part is. I'm going to do it again tomorrow. <laughs> and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. I'm sure it'll be okay. I'll just keep one foot in front of the other until I get there. But, uh, that was as close as me not giving up. But as close as me, just sitting down and screaming and just going, I can't want to go anymore. That wasn't much fun. Very unpleasant. Great area, beautiful scenery and all the rest of it, but I was in pain for most of it. But anyway, we're through. The point of all that, and I'm just, we have, I have some great days out on trails. Some fast, fantastic days, but there are some horrible stuff in between. It's not all, you know, beautiful vistas and lovely campsites and laughs. They're the rewards of all the stuff that we do. It's all the stuff that we learn on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, when we're training, when we're doing Legend Daddies, when I'm doing UBM, things like that. It's what we learn. It's what we talk about. We talk about resilience and endurance and we think we know what it is until we get really faced with it or punched in the face and uh, I'm usually pretty resilient I'm usually pretty I've got a fair bit of endurance but today really really beat me up now I made it so it shows that I still have those things I'm tapped out. Doesn't mean it's easy. I'll learn from it though. And I'll know next time I get sore. 
I need to do this, I need to do that. I haven't worked out what they are yet. <laughs> but anyway, we'll work it out soon. All right, there's a glimpse into the day of a day that's gone wrong on the trail. All right. Onwards and upwards, lads. Go forth and conquer.